All right, so as promised, I'm gonna put the upper ball joint in. I'm gonna use the car as my anchor and my vise. Before I do that, I'm gonna throw some grease in the threads. Almost too easy. So here we go. Uh, we'll get the boot up in here like so. All right, got my trusty PVC pipe. PCV. PVC whatever PVC I think PCV pressure crankcase ventilation so this is a two inch it's a little bit big for this um, it's probably an inch and a half but I'm gonna try to grab it here on the edge like that just work it around By the way, these are not threaded. They're just a hole. And so when you thread these guys in, you're actually creating the threads. So do the best you can to get it in there straight. All right, so this upper ball joint's been sitting around a while. It's got a little bit of surface rust on it, and it's making it a little bit tight to get in there. So before we get into real trouble, I'm gonna go ahead and wire wheel this, try to get off as much surface rust as possible before we thread it in there. All right, I went ahead and painted it and ran the wire wheel across this, so hopefully it'll thread in a lot easier. I don't know if you could see, you can try 2X. But inside that hole, it's basically not threaded. I think I need a flashlight. See inside that hole? There's no threads. So when you put the Zerk in there, you're basically threading it as you insert it. We'll talk about that again too. Just uh, Mainly just don't get it crooked. All right, I cleaned up these threads with wire, wire wheel, um, and then I greased the hell out of everything. It went on a lot easier. If you saw there at the end, it started to get tight again. Um, so basically, this, there can be no gap between the head where the, uh, the flats are for the socket. There can be no gap between that and this lip on the upper control arm. Basically that seam right there. So you gotta keep turning. It got really difficult to turn, so I had to use the, the pipe on it. Um, the, uh, oh, why do I always forget what Duddy calls these things? The intimidator, no, the leverageinator, yeah, whatever. Anyways, um, we got it on there, so that's good. So let's go ahead and get the boot up here. Use my PVC pipe. That didn't work too well. Let's 
Sometimes working on cars could be very frustrating. All right, that's good. All right, so while the spindle is still down low, pull it out of the way, make it, um, so I grabbed it, and I'm pulling it out of the way, just to make it easy for access. I'm gonna go ahead and put the shock up in there, and, uh, well, everything is simple to get to and go ahead and bolt it into the lower control arm and the, um, the uh, shock tower. So these rubbers come on there how they're supposed to go on the shock. But just in case you took them all off and you're wondering, the side with the step is supposed to go down and it's supposed to fit into the, uh, that hole of the shock tower. All right, so to tighten the upper shock nut, you basically have to hold it right here. It's got two little flats on here, which I'm gonna use this small crescent wrench to hold. And then you could sit there with an open end wrench and try to tighten this down, which will take forever. Or you can use one of these. This is actually like one of the coolest tools ever invented in concept. Um, it's basically like a ratcheting box end. The only problem with it is that it's so big that you can't practically use it on anything. So it's one of those really cool tools that it's just not very practical and not very convenient for most things. Eh, looks like it'll work on fender bolts. But anyways, so I'm gonna put this on here the right way. Oh, and then how you ratchet back and forth is you just flip it over. One way is tightened, the other way is loosened. So tighten it. So far I'm not having to hold the shaft, but at some point the shaft starts to spin. I'm gonna hold it with this. It saves a lot of time. Hey, check that out. Found another cool use. I happen to have one of these that's a 7 8. So I'm using it to get the uh, nut on the upper ball joint kind of started up there so I can get enough space to get the socket and the ratchet below it. Hopefully it fits. Nope, never mind. The ratchet of this thing is broken, started slipping. And uh, still can't get the socket in there, so just gonna have to use a regular box then to get it tightened up. All right, let's find the hole. So I've got the nut all the way tight, trying to get the cotter pin in, and it just won't go in because the castle nut's just not on there far enough. So Rarely do, do I refer to the instructions or read them. And I, I didn't even read these. <laughs> I just looked here. You know, it shows prop, improper installation without washer. And it shows the cotter pin um, hole basically above the castle nut where it's not gonna catch. And then it shows improper installation with the washer. Basically the hole's too low in the castle nut that you can't get a cotter pin through it, which is kind of my scenario right now. And then it says here, proper installation with or without washer. So it shows it aligned. So I believe what that implies to me, because I'm not gonna read everything that's on there, is that you can put this on with or without a washer. In fact, I just looked at my Coronet and I actually don't have a washer on that one. 
and I've driven that car for quite a few years and drag raced it and haven't had any issue with it so I'm thinking the right thing to do is not have a washer on it so pull that out let's see let's see how the car pin fits now Probably a little in between, but we're gonna put it there. I'm not really worried about it. The main thing with the cotter pin is it's just gonna make sure it doesn't completely come off, you know. So even in a like worst case scenario, let's say um, this nut starts to back off, it's only gonna be able to go so far before the cotter pin catches it and I tweak the hell out of it because trying to get it into the hole earlier All right. also if you noticed I screwed up again on the top one and I didn't position the ball point so that I'm um, the ball point the ball joint so that it the hole is forward and backwards before I push the spindle up over it so now it's like this, facing the spindle, making it more difficult to uh, to get the cotter pin out when, if I ever have to pull it out someday, hopefully never, or at least it'll be like 30 years from now. Um, at any rate, that's on there. We'll try to remember for the other side. All right, so we're ready to put the caliper brackets on. And the question is, which way does it go on? You got a flat machine side, kind of a pocket side. This side is gonna be the side that the bolts go through it. So the caliper bracket is gonna go on the back side of the spindle. The question is, or I should say the next question is, because you have a left and right side, which side goes on here, right? So let's see. If we try to put this one on here we can see that this hole doesn't line up it's basically hitting the top of the spindle so it kind of forces you to always put the right one on I grab the other one put it on here so this arm is kind of longer it would hit this but this one clears so I know that that's the right way and then I'm gonna take my nuts or I mean my bolts and start screwing them through here and then I think we're ready for the, the dust shields So you got like a mirror image of the dust shields of each other. Which one goes where? Well, these big holes right here are gonna line to these big uh, bolts right here. The, right there. You got the three holes that are gonna hold it on. And then you got the two holes here, which basically align up to the bolts that you just put through the caliper bracket. The stock ones have more of a uh, I guess like a nipple sticking out through here, which kind of helped guide it on. So basically this would go on like that, but you can see how the curvature here is facing this way, which is the wrong way. So that's the wrong side. And uh, this is the correct side. So we put it on here like so. You know, and if these were stock bolts here, they would kind of hold it in place better. And then we're gonna put these guys in. Uh, before I do that, this is kind of dirty, so let me clean it up first. Alright, we established we're not going to use the washer. We didn't use it on the other side. And the hole is going this way. Let's see with the nail in here. 
So I want to make sure that I put the spindle facing this way so that I get the cotter pin going that direction. So put that there. gonna be really hard to get tight but I'm really close all right so the holes facing the right way all right we're good we're gonna go ahead and put the shock in there it's just um, easier to get it in there and the spindle you can kind of push out of your way so All right, now we'll go top side and tighten it down. All right, so here, there's the rubber with a little bump in it. This side's flat. So this bump is what goes through the shock tower. All right, oh, by the way, show you that. This side says on, that side says off. So you put it this way if you're taking it off, and you put it this way if you're tightening it on, like we're doing here. Well, I was using this, this worked on that side pretty well. And the nice thing about this is that it leaves the uh, top of the shock protruding through so you can see it if it's spinning or not. Problem is, is I got the header here and the shock tower there. So I'm gonna opt for the ratchet for speed, which I won't be able to tell if it's spinning or not. Other than I can watch the rubber, if it's squishing, then I know we're good. And you basically you're gonna switch it, squish it, until the rubber gets the same diameter as the uh, the washer and kind of feel like it runs out of threads. So there we go. We're done on the top. Right now here's the bottom of the shock. It's a little low. Turn the screwdriver in here, see if the spindle was up, bolted up. You wouldn't be able to get the screwdriver in here, pry it up bolt through there now the nut this side's 5 8 this side's 11 16 I'm going to bolt the spindle to the lower ball joint and then I'm going to get a socket and tighten up the upper ball joint as much as I can and then drive the cotter pin through that. And then I think we're done for today. Are you kidding me right now? This can't be happening. Sure seems like it though. Acts like the hole is not aligned. Don't 
come and glue just yet. Are you kidding me right now? You've got to be kidding me. What the F? Unbelievable, dude. Unfreaking believable. All right. I, dude, I don't even know the company I bought these spindles from. Um, either the ball joint's f***ed up, or the spindle is effed up. And if I had to guess, my money is on the spindle being effed up. Holes being in the wrong spot. It's just a hair off. See that edge on this side? So, the holes on the spindle are either too wide or the holes in the lower ball joint are too narrow so I'm gonna go see if I have another ball joint and we'll bolt that up to the spindle if it will bolt up if the spindle if it won't bolt up then it's got to be the spindle which means I got to destroy my upper boot to get the spindle off more than likely and I need to get another spindle Son of a bitch. Freaking pile of junk. Pay all that money for this shit. And then somebody screwed it up. And you see, I didn't know, I didn't catch it because I put drop spindles on the duster, which is the kit I bought this with. This is so freaking frustrating. Yep. So just like I suspected, these ball joints are the same, and uh, yeah, they freaking drilled this, this spindle wrong. So, whoops. Uh, so, you know, they're about 240 bucks, the cheapest set I could find from POL. Um, the only way you can really fix this is if you're a machinist and you, um, man, I don't even think that would work. I was thinking you 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 uh, plug that and then redrill the hole, but it only needs to move over like I don't know, maybe a sixteenth or an eighth. Uh, so yeah, I think these are these are basically junk. This one is junk. The other side went on just fine. So. All right, that's where we're at. All right, so I went through my stash of parts and I do have a set of spindles, um, original ones, but you could see that ball joint fits. Um, so I think I'm gonna clean these, this up, paint it, and uh, throw it on the car and save money because like I said, another set is like 240 bucks, you know, so, and they don't look different at all. I mean, that looks exactly the same as the one that's on there. So anyway, all right, so there's our plan. We can clean that up and throw it on the car. So here's the used spindle I thought I scored on. And uh, now that I get, I'm getting all the grease and grime off of it. It's freaking hammered, man. I mean, this, the inner bearing is gonna, the outer, inner bearing's gonna be here, outer bearing's gonna ride here. This thing's just chewed, freaking chewed. So, junk. Holy crap, man. I can't believe that. Why couldn't the other side be all chewed up? If the other side was chewed up, then no problem. But this is the side I need. Isn't it? Is that the driver's side? Let me see. It's 
So I grabbed the wrong one. This chewed up one is the driver's side. I don't need the driver's side. I'm good on the driver's side. So this one's screwed. And then I'm seeing, I don't even know what this is off of. Because this is an A body one. See how much smaller it is? That might be a C body or something. Or a truck. I don't think trucks like that. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's not the A body style. So, I don't need this one either. This is the one I need. Alright, cool. Back in business. This I could throw in the trash. Correct one. Okay, come on, baby. Be good. Alright, so now that we know this spindle doesn't fit, I'm going to pull it back off. So, I'm going to pull it off and to get it back off now, I don't think I tightened it up all the way. I was going to do that after it was bolted up. So maybe we're not pressed in too bad up here. And maybe when I take a pickle fork to it, it'll pop off easily without tearing up the boot. But we shall see. Oh! <laughs> that's funny. I had the pickle fork and hammer ready. Well, that's kind of convenient. I mean, for a bad situation, right? That's cool. Alright, so here's my two spindles. This is the brand new one that doesn't fit. And this is the factory one I cleaned up that I'm gonna put into the car. So you can see they're the same basic shape, same height. Uh, you can see here, kind of the old original factory one casting is not as clean as the, the newer one here. Um, but if I try to put the ball joint up here to the spindle, you can see it's close, but you can see how the holes on the spindle itself are too far apart. So the lower ball joint won't go on. So this is basically paperweight. On the factory original one, it goes on like a glove. So we're gonna put this on the car. And throw this one away. All right, so we got lucky. I mean, we got unlucky and got a crappy spindle, right? And then we got lucky and had a good spare spindle and got lucky that the crappy spindle just popped right off. I hadn't really tightened it up yet uh, so yeah we'll tighten this thing up and we'll get the spindle done on the passenger side 